All right, so cathode ray tubes. Um, what we have learned so far. Let's do a quick recap before we go into today's lesson. So let's have a quick recall. I'm going to jump a bit all over the place. So maybe you're going to see on Google Meet for a while before we go to Gen 1, all right? So uh, we have already learned about cathode ray tubes, all right? Uh, roughly, like, okay, it's made up of, uh, the, you know, all this, the, the two power supplies, you know, the filament, the cathode anode and all that. And then uh, deflection tube, as well as the Maltese cross tube, are modified CRTs. That means they are actually CRT technology. We add on stuff. And these two tubes are used only in the laboratory. Purpose of these two tubes is for what? To help us find these properties of cathode rays. So these are some of the properties of cathode rays. And uh, they're important to know. So they travel in a straight line. They can be deflected in an electrical field as well as a magnetic field. Now, um, so far what we've only learned are are they're not concepts they're they're actually um they're actually objects so you've you've learned how cathode ray tube is designed and then how to modify uh, like like what what is the deflection tube and multi's cross tube and all that right so uh i would say that how much they will ask from this topic i honestly don't know because in the previous previous syllabus in the kbsm syllabus this chapter this topic was a bit longer your syllabus they've taken out half of this topic and this part of this maltese cross tube and deflection tube in the past few past many many years more than 20 years they almost never ask in spm they, they always ask the other part and now that part has been taken out so i don't know whether this will actually be tested in spm or not i i honestly i cannot tell you honestly um, but having said that, though, looking at the, the, the way questions are always asked, the, you know, how the questions are created, what kind of questions they ask in SPM, it is not likely they would ask a lot of questions from this topic. Why? Because there's not enough application. In terms of application, I don't mean like, oh, you know, device, oh, let's look at a fridge. It's more like new situation, how to take this concept, apply in a new situation. They don't have, there's, there's, not, there's nothing of that here. In 5.1, it says, so far has all been memorizing. All of this is memorizing. If they ask you questions, all based on what you can recall. Just open, write the answer down. You don't have to figure, you don't have to like figure out the answer. You know what I mean? Like in the other topics, right? Um, electricity, for example, I can change the circuit. Then you got to figure out, oh, how to use the, you know, which formula, how to use the formula. But this one don't have. You just open and, and answer me. So the only thing maybe is the calculation of the velocity, but even then, you see lah, huh? it's not difficult. So let's go into the calculation of the velocity. I'm going to slide number 12 if you want to come in on the jam board with me, okay? So it's like this. So if you have uh, the cat thought, let's connect this, cha cha cha. I'm, I'm borrowing this from your textbook, uh, but you don't need to refer to your, to your textbook for this. Lah, okay? I think it's in your... Yeah, it's on page 175, but I'm modifying it a little bit. So let's say, for example, we have the cathode and the anode over here. And actually, there should be the filament. Sorry, because I, I, sorry, I do this for my class yesterday because I took this from the textbook. Uh, but let's do this. Let's let's do an actual cathode ray tube. So we have the filament to provide heat. So this is the filament, right? And this is our cathode. So the cathode, as we know, will get hot. So when it gets hot, it releases electrons. The electrons, woo, woo, the positive is there. Let's go party. Then it goes over there, like fly over there to the other side, right? Okay. okay, so what happens is when the electrons emerge from the uh, the hot metal surface, they actually possess energy. Where does this energy come from? It comes from the high voltage. So if the voltage is too low, there's not enough energy provided to the electrons. So the moment electrons jump out, the high voltage here creates high tension and gives the electrons a lot of energy. This energy is known as potential energy. 
But as we know, there's many different kinds of potential energy. There's gravitational potential energy. There's elastic potential energy. Chemical energy is also a potential energy. In this case, because this comes from an electrical circuit, the electrons possess electrical potential energy. So the diagram in page 179 doesn't have the filament, but I'm adding the filament here because otherwise it doesn't make sense. Like um, on its own, like this, like this in your textbook, it's the cathode doesn't get hot enough to release any electrons. <coughs> okay, anyway. So this EV, what is this EV? Um, in this case, E, <coughs> excuse me, is you've learned before in chapter three, <coughs> excuse me, charge of an electron. It's the, the charge, the coulomb. Remember the coulomb we learned at the beginning of chapter 3? How much the electron carries that charge? Um, just write, you only need to write the magnitude. You don't need to write the symbol. No need to write negative or positive. So in this case, the value is 1.6 times 10 power of negative 19 coulomb. You don't have to memorize the number. They will give you the number in the question. Okay? Capital V, this big V stands for what? Voltage of the EHT supply. Voltage of EHT supply. So you girls, you have to think about it. True or not? Yeah, law. The higher voltage, more energy, ma. Makes sense, right? Mm. Voltage of EHT supply. So this electrical potential energy is possessed by a single electron because you only have charge of one electron ma so one electron means the energy of one electron law all right now what happens is the anode will attract the electron so the electron will move at high speed okay go the other side so remember that put teacher is the emf work done to move electrons worth one coulomb of charge uh, it is the work done to move okay, one coulomb, one coulomb, one joules per coulomb, one volt. EMF is the work done for every one, one, one joule per one coulomb. Yeah, so it's the work done to move one coulomb. Yeah, sorry, yes. But EMF is not the work done to move. That's volt, that's potential difference. EMF is the the power of the the work done by the power supply. EMF is basically the work done by the power supply to move one coulomb of charge. So it's still one coulomb of charge, but, EH, the, but EMF is specifically by the power supply. Okay. Just so you can think of it that way, like to move electrons worth one coulomb of charge. Yeah, yeah, you can think of it that way. Okay. Okay, uh, so remember that potential energy, so I'm just rubbing up because it's so messy. So remember that potential energy is energy that could be converted into other forms, like gravitational energy you learned last time converted to kinetic, right? Um, so in this case, this, elast this, the, sorry, this electrical potential energy of the electrons will also be converted to kinetic because it's going to move. But you can't remember, right? When we first jump out, they don't move straight away. There must be an attraction. So when it pulls, it starts moving faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. So the electrons will gain kinetic energy and lose potential energy. It's not written in your book, but I think I would like to share a, a little bit of additional information so that at least it makes sense to you. Why why, why we need to count this nonsense in the first place? Okay, let me share with you, right? So you see, you know like how throughout the class, I keep talking about TVs and monitors and all that because those are practical devices. Those are practical devices. Like e the, the, the Maltese cross tube and the uh what the, the deflection tube, all they're, they're not practical devices, you know, they're 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 just laboratory devices. But practical ones is like what you when you use in daily life, like the television, for example. Ah, that one you can actually use ma in real life, right? So if we want to have a useful device that's based on the CRT, let's take a look at, let's say, um, television, for example, right? So in this case, then, we don't have an anode like this. Your anode is the tunnel. Okay, should be the other way, sorry. Ah, tunnel, okay? So what happens is the, the electrons will go through to the other side, okay? So they all go through like that, okay? They all go through, okay? 
to the other side. And on where the screen is, right, that's where they put the, the fluorescent material. Now, fluorescent material, that, like remember yesterday, uh, we, we saw the Maltese cross tube picture. The material doesn't glow. It's not a glow in the dark material. It's just a normal material. It's just like, like it looks, looks very normal, like there ain't like nothing like that. But this fluorescent screen, right? Flor fluorescent screen. When the electron hits the fluorescent screen at that point of contact, oh, sorry, at that point of impact, it will produce light. So that's why you need a continuous stream of electrons to keep the image going. Okay, so it will keep hitting. So then you get the light. So the fluorescent screen will convert the kinetic energy of the electrons to light energy. I mentioned this before, I'm mentioning it again. Okay, I'll just write in short form, huh? electrons. So why, so that, why, why is this, uh, how is this related? Okay, so I want you to imagine, right, okay, if let's say, right, we have a small space, okay, like let's say in your house, lah, some of you uh, stay in condo, some of you stay in landed property, right? Some of you mentioned. So let's say you um okay, let's say you can't go out of the house. Okay, I don't know how big your house is. Maybe your house is very, very big, then you're very, very fortunate. Um, but I want you to imagine you go to a smaller room. Small room, okay, small space. Okay, so like like mine, I stay in a condo, right? So I want you to imagine, right? If I ask you to try to run, so let's say you run from your balcony to your door. Maybe your, maybe your bedroom, lah, can also. You run from your bed your balcony, or your no balcony, never mind, you run from the bathroom door to your, your bedroom door. You try to run. Can you run fast? And let's compare that if we all go to the football field. Okay, like your last time, last sports day, always have everyone have to go and do the 100 meter jump, then you run not the 100 meter, 100 meter, no, you run, 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 not 100 meter jump, but like long jump, you run, run, then you have to jump. Then you compare, okay, go to the field, that long track, you run. Which which track or which area allows you to run faster? The one, your short, short one in your bedroom or on the football field? Longer distance. <coughs> Excuse me. Football field, second, yeah. And some of you are athletes. I know some of you are athletes. Some of you can run really fast. But no matter how fast a runner you are, I give you that short distance, can you really achieve a high speed? Obviously not lah, right? You need, yes, you need that longer distance in order to have space to gain that kinetic energy. And that's exactly the same as for these electrons as well. If you provide a short space for the electrons, like here's the cathode, here's the anode, the moment you come up, hit the anode already, like upper knee. Like, uh, it, it, no, no time to even breathe, already, already reach. This is why CRT devices always have very big backside. Very long one, the backside. Because inside, inside it looks like this. You need to give the electrons space to be able to gain the energy. So imagine, right, no matter how much electrical energy they possess here, like, wow, very high. You put, you can put, like, you know, like 30,000 volts if you want to go crazy, right? But if you have 30,000 volts and the space is this short, even though the electrons have a lot of energy, they can't gain enough kinetic energy. Okay, because what, the, what happens to the fluorescent screen here is not how much energy they have. It's how much kinetic energy they have. So they could have a lot of maybe like if you if they 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 they, they only move a little bit hit uh, they maybe have a lot of electrical energy not yet convert to kinetic but because they haven't gained enough kinetic right they can't produce a lot of light because you got to think it's so fast boom, it's at high speed that produces that light it's that collision that produces produces that light okay doesn't the distance affect the brightness since the light energy converted from kinetic energy ah that's where we're getting to. So that means you imagine you have to put longer distance law. This is why 
if you get if you look at those um maybe now not relevant because nowadays everyone use um the thin monitors but the olden days last time when they have very small tvs normally they use this for cctvs lah very small ones very small cctv then you see it's a small small cute cute one while the back small small one short short one like can see things but not very clear lah because not enough light energy because it's too short lah how to show then you cannot like you see the cctv ah got someone walking there you can see one body moving there but you can't even see the face because it's not clear you can just just enough light to see created just enough to form some rough images so that's why for clearer pictures you want a larger image larger tv you have to have a longer back for the crt tvs that's why they need that longer distance does that make sense So, how long should it be? Also, uh, it depends. Like the manufacturers, you have to calculate and count this, lah, right? So normally, right, the the distance, right, it has to be long enough so that the electrons can hit their maximum velocity. So, also another thing, ah, uh, you can if let's say you put the voltage not that high, let's say you only put about three thousand volts, and then you put a super long distance. If your maximum is three thousand volts, the maximum energy it has, right? You let's say like you put so long, it doesn't mean that you keep gaining speed because once the all the electrical energy has been converted to kinetic, if let's say oh hit let's say like here lah, already travel in the middle already hit the maximum, then from here to here is already maximum. It won't go faster and faster because it used up its energy, all the energy converted to kinetic already. So just just putting longer distance or more doesn't mean you increase the speed. It depends on two things, lah. Depends on the the voltage provided, as well as whether you gave the electron enough space or not for it to gain its uh kinetic energy. You don't have to count all that, don't worry. And you don't have to use that in the future because nobody uses this technology anymore. Okay, but I'm just explaining to you. Um, at least you know what's <laughs> roughly going on, lah. Then next time you can talk to your parents, like, wow, you know all this technology, che, wow, macam you pandai. <laughs> okay, but anyway, uh, but but that's the idea, lah. Okay. So, which means that, um, like the concept of conservation of energy. So at this point, we assume that the electron has managed to reach its maximum kinetic energy. Can anyone give me the formula for kinetic energy? Does anyone remember it? I know you're looking at the textbook. Half mv squared. So that so what? Uh, the kind of questions you may come across here. Sorry, notification. One of the, the the questions you may come across here is they would ask you to calculate the velocity of the electron that um that has been gained during this motion so based on the conservation of energy right so we know that the electrical potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy and we need that high kinetic energy for more light energy okay but you won't count the light energy you will just we'll just stop here lah. so that means from here the formula that you would use is the maximum not maximum yeah, maximum maximum electrical potential energy is equal to the maximum kinetic energy. That means, let's say if this is at point A and this is at point B, this is at this is A, the energy at A is converted to B. As a result, that's how you get the formula at the bottom of page 179 in your textbook, EV equals to half mv squared, where m is the mass of one electron because we're looking for one mass charge of n electron so the mass will be mass for one electron no? don't worry they'll give you the mass and small v small v is the velocity or the speed of the electron that we're counting okay make sense uh yes yes in a vacuum what happens if it's not a vacuum Correct. There you go. You answered your own question. 
Makes sense, right? So that's why, yeah. So that's why you find cathode ray tubes, you always put them in vacuum, vacuum. In fact, next time you want, if let's say any of you love um, computers and electronics so much and you go and look at uh, history, right? They do have like, they, they actually can actually go to certain museums in US and all that. They actually have the first, the very first cathode ray tubes. And I can't remember which museum. I've never seen, lah, but I've read about it. Like they have the very first one. And sometimes they don't call it CRT. Sometimes they call it vacuum tube. They, they do. Sometimes they call that like the but, no vacuum tube. They call it a different name. See, I forgot the name. But they will say, oh, this is the first vacuum something something. And they actually use the word vacuum because they keep, because yes, it's very important to have it in a vacuum. All right. Okay. So come, let's uh, go to our module book now. Page 176. Page 176. Chonto Satu. Okay. So I copied the question here, but it's not complete because I don't know how to do um, superscripts in Jamboard. So let me add the numbers here. Uh, negative 19. So, so this kind of question is, well, okay, la, I don't like this question, but never mind. The numbers are there. Uh, so this question, Tugasan, Tugasan 1, it, uh, it, this is obviously in 5.1, so we will count this la, under uh, uh, CRT, okay? So they gave us the mass of the electron, charge of one electron, and accelerating voltage. So sometimes they call it accelerating voltage because remember that the EHT supply causes the electron to accelerate. Um, don't worry about what accelerating or what. It's just, okay, this voltage of EHT. But yeah, why they call it accelerating? It's because the voltage makes the electron accelerate. Because remember when it first come out, zero velocity, ma, then it gains speed faster and faster and faster and faster. Ah, so accelerating, look. that's why they call it accelerating voltage. So obviously, after all that brick moral, right, 30 minutes of explaining this slide, uh, obviously we are going to use this formula, lah, ha? all right? So EV equals to half mv squared. Do you need me to show you the substitution or you all counted already? If you've counted already, and I don't know, I tekan something. Oi, am I still online? Okay, I pressed something wrong. Can you come on a jam board and just dump your answer here? Cause a bit boring, huh? Miss Ho always talking and doing all the work. I don't want to do all the work, man. I got my A one long time ago already. Okay, so <laughs> so uh, can you all come into this jam board to slide ah slide number thirteen? And if you've counted, just uh, put your answer. No need to show me working. Just put your answer there. But like you can use sticky notes. Just sticky note lah. Easier to write sticky note. Okay, <laughs> okay. At least, at least you're trying. Look, at least you're trying. Then, then I can, I then we see what went wrong. I, I didn't count because my book got answer. <laughs> my last count got answer before I count. <laughs> ah, Miss Ho is so shocked, Sundari. Okay. Uh, so here, this this answer is correct. Uh, just that, yeah, if you because now the numbers are a bit long, it would be better to present them in standard form. But the answer, I think, is yeah, the answer is correct. But just better to present in standard form. So yes, standard form, this is correct. But this is not too far though. It should be what three point two what. Point two five. So even when you round up or round down, you have to, you do have to be careful because uh, they will check. They will check on this kind of thing. Okay. So be careful about that. So these two, uh, what went wrong? This one, uh, not complete yet. You forgot to square root. Check and see. This one, who whoever wrote this, please check. I think that you didn't put brackets in your calculator. When you type in the numbers, you forgot to put bracket. <laughs> oh yeah now it okay so it happens that's why better to make the mistake now so that in the future you recall oh yeah i forgot to square root okay <laughs> never mind so do the correction please in your book 
or, or rather you finish up because that means you're almost done. Right? You just need to add one more line, okay? Okay, so here, um, one thing to help you figure out, because sometimes I know when we're doing a question, especially an exam, and obviously you don't know the answer, lah, right? And it's like, I don't know whether my answer is correct or not. Okay. Um, can anyone tell me the speed of light? The value of the speed of light? How much is the speed of light? Very fast. <laughs> that is a very safe answer. <laughs> three, <laughs> three times ten power of eight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Three times ten power of eight meters per second. All right. So now in uh, physics, theoretically, speed of light is the fastest speed uh, that we know of. Yes, it we it may be possible that there are other um other things whether energy or, or or objects or whatever could be any something could be traveling faster than the speed is possible we haven't discovered it yet in fact if you you are very interested in this i think you read i think a few years ago i did read um scientists have possibly found something that traveled faster than the speed of light but they're not sure and they're still researching about it so we so that that one is still in you know like we still don't know yet so as of now this is the faster speed we know of so if you're counting speed of anything you can never get a number higher than this okay logic ah huh? because obviously right if suddenly something can go faster than speed of light means wow that magical thing then everyone were talking about it no okay so this is the speed of light. Um, so just remember, anything, everything that we count has to be lower than this speed. Then you see the number eight, 10 power seven, still very high, you know, it's like quite fast, huh? Oh yeah, it's still, it's still very fast, you know. You think about logic, eight, 10 power seven, it's very fast, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay, because electrons can travel up to 90 to 95% speed of light. Okay, so if you get the number where something times 10 power of 7, right, four electrons, it is likely to be correct because that's somewhere about there, like 95% of the speed of light. Okay, so what I'm sharing you over here is just um, extra information. Next time you want to double check a hey, my number, is it potentially correct or not? If it's within this range, it is most likely to be correct for the electron speed. Okay. But it cannot be higher than speed of light. Long suddenly you count, wow, I got like, you know, 4 times, 4.2 times 10 power 8. Ah, cannot. But let's say 4.2 times 10 power 7. Ah, possibly correct. Okay.